Hello everyone, it's great to have you here. Today is the fourth uh, webinar in our series uh, regarding remote work. And today we'll be talking about leading remote teams. So role of a manager or role of a team leader. Um, and today uh, with me, uh, there is Natalia Shanowska, uh, who is a content team leader in NetGuru. And Natalia, maybe you can introduce yourself, say a few mm. words about yourself. Yes, of course. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalia, as Christoph mentioned. I have been leading the content uh, marketing team uh, at NetGuru for uh, around nine months now, and I have been uh, working for the company for more than three years. Uh, it's kind of a new adventure for me, uh, being a team leader. Uh, it's definitely challenging, um, but uh, but, but as an employee in Edna Guru, I've always been uh, a remote worker. So for me, it's always been uh, uh, the position of a remote leader. Uh, and I'm happy today to share um, my tips and my stories, uh, how to do it uh, effectively. And Natalia is one of the most remote leaders that we have uh, in re NetGuru. So she's uh, at the very end of the scale because you can tell us also where do you, you are calling us now from? So I'm currently in Cape Town uh, in South Africa. And in this crazy times uh, during the lockdown, um, I decided I'm going to stay here and then wait off until the situation calms down and I can uh, probably move forward. Cool, thank you. Uh, and I, my name is Chris. If you want to direct any questions to me, you don't need to remember this, uh, you know, strange Polish uh, name. Chris is fine. And uh, I've been, re recently I've been uh, t talking and uh, researching and sharing our uh, remote work experience or remote work tips. So, um, I will be providing my perspective about you know being a manager in a company that is fully remote because uh, NetGuru, as we told before, and some of you who are new to the to the series might not know, we have over 600 people on board right now, and we are working fully remotely for last over three weeks right now. Uh, before we were remote friendly or remote first company, where offices were optional, but we have. All, closed all of the offices and right now everybody is working from home. Um, and today we'll be talking about the definition of a leader or what kind of capabilities we see important uh, in being a leader and how do we deal with working with a team that you cannot see or meet uh, for a very long time. And after the short presentation, we'll have session for questions and answers. Please submit your questions in Q&A box. Uh, this way we can organize how we will answer them. So. Uh, Please do. Along throughout the whole event, you can you can uh, write any questions or um, your thoughts or reflections about what we are saying. And at the very end, uh, we'll share with you the slides and recording, and it will be posted to our to our uh, YouTube channel as well. So you can watch it later on as well uh, at your convenience. And we thought about you know, defining the leader's role right now. And we thought first about you know, being specifically remote or going through a crisis or any kind of change. But in the end, we, we decided that basically good leadership is the same in all of those situations. However, the times have changed and the definition of a leader or somebody who is in charge has also changed a bit. And we find that the old model of being a leader manager was rather ready, aim, fire. So your role was to make sure that you minimize the risk, that you are well prepared, that you have a plan, and all of the activities that your team will be executing will be more or less a success. The more, the better. But generally speaking, right now, we are in the situation that we don't have this luxury of time for planning and preparation. So a more adequate model for right, being a, model, uh, a leader right now is rather fire, fire, fire. So you have to do things, you know, you are uh, thriving in different activities and experiments because we need to adapt very fast to changing situation that is happening right now. Like this move to remote for many companies happened from one day to another without any time for preparation and long planning and having nice charts and roadmaps for uh, 
execution of this difficult process. And I think that if somebody would ask me like what one piece of advice I can give to new leaders is get used to it because it won't disappear, it won't change anytime soon. So we need to adapt our organizations at the very rapid pace. And sometimes we, we, maybe we can have some a moment to aim and course correct our direction, but we surely will be never ready. Like th those times are, are over and we need to adapt our leadership, let's say arsenal of different skills and practices to be efficient, to be effective in such an environment. So when I'm thinking about the leading in modern times, it's more of a surfing on this stormy water and performing as many activities, as many experiments as possible to be the fittest, to be uh, the most adaptive, because this is not about the survival of the biggest or the strongest, rather the fittest. So you need to let go the control and give people information and authority to make decisions of, on their own, to execute some actions on their own. This way, you can really get this fast pace of changes and adaptation. And we believe that in the end, you need to take care of the people of your team, and then they will take care of the any KPIs that you are, you know, uh, that you want to, to, to have or to, to meet any goals that you have for your orga organization. And why we don't need to think about the business so much or the more of the this, uh, typical control mode of uh, managerial stuff, because as we talk to you on our previous webinar, one of our, of our previous webinars, making work visible, we have those systems which show us what is going on and who is doing what. And this doesn't require any status meetings or any, you know, um, very uh, rapid and, and very intensive control mode. And we showed you Trello and Jira before. This one is a, another tool, which is Monday. And this is actually the tool that uh, Nat's uh, team is using. So Natalia, maybe you can tell us what are the benefits of, of using this um, kind of software. Yeah, the whole growth team is actually using the, this tool and we've, uh, we've only started, started setting it up. Um, for us, the main challenge is that uh, we have more than uh, 30 people right now in the whole growth team and there are several teams within it and content marketing is one of the teams. And we have our internal tasks uh, as a content marketing team, but we also have cross team uh, activities, also including all the teams from the whole company. And then when, the, when, the, when I joined Nguri, there were only uh, a few people within the whole growth team. So it was easier to manage everything and kind of keep everyone in the loop. Whereas right now we have so many initiatives and so many different projects and different types of projects that um, it's impossible to track everything. Uh, just asking people what's the status, what's going on. And like having this tool is just um, helps us to be people to be more transparent, helps the leaders to see where is the progress, what people are working for, uh, working on, what's the workload. So we can see that they are actually, maybe they have too many things uh, at, uh, doing at the same time. Um, and yeah, it's very user friendly, like Monday is very user friendly. Uh, we're still learning to uh, this tool, but uh, definitely one of the, one of the, 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 the nicest we've tried. Cool, thanks. Uh, and one other thing that we also discussed during the webinar about the communication, that keeping everybody in sync, that keeping everybody on the same page is also very important. And we have all of those different habits of communication when we have uh, check-ins for every day to just understand what other people are working on, especially in such teams where you have a group of specialists and each of them is working on different things. Like they are not really cooperating on a single work item and things like sharing the results and showing where we are at at the given moment and what that what does it mean for the team or simply like keeping everybody updated on what's going on within the company what is important for you and sharing those information because not everyone might be catching up on those uh, most important things that are going on but we already like this is a background for people who didn't so 
to those who didn't see the previous webinars, but going into the leadership role and thinking about taking care of the people, what we find out is when you move to remote, you need to be much more intentional in any managerial or leadership practices. You need to be much more explicit because you don't have this uh, situation when you are in the office and you can do this just spontaneously as passing by, you know, tap people on the back or uh, hear Jane saying something very smart and say aloud, Jane, that's why I, I love working with you. And Jane hears that and half of the office hears that and everybody's happy. In a remote setting, it's not possible. You need to call out a 15 minutes um, meeting with the team. And, you know, I gathered you all today to say you that I love working with Jane. And this is somehow awkward and I make it cartoonish on a purpose, but generally you need to think through and prepare much more than uh, in a regular collocation, collocated setting. So management by wandering around is not possible and you need to be much more deliberate in how you manage your team and be much more conscious of the activities that are necessary to manage their effectiveness, well-being, motivation, engagement and things uh, like that. And we'll discuss it today. So one of the, the, the real examples for me is a user guide to working with or read me for a manager. And this is my file I share with all of the people in our organization, especially those who are joining my team so that we can learn about each other a bit more. I don't have this comfort of going out for a lunch with them and having those casual talks. So this kind of document is breaking the first ice to understand who they will work with, what are my expectations, what kind of value I can provide to their work. Those kind of things are over there. And many of us have such documents and they are available for the whole company. So anyone who has uh, been working with us for the first time can see and understand who they are talking to or who they are co collaborating with. The other thing is celebrations. And we talked about it a bit before, but thinking of the manager, you need to really have this in your mind or written somewhere that there are those personal moments that is worth celebrating and you need to prepare up front. There is no situation that somebody will call from the kitchen, you know, I have a cake because today the, there are my birthday. When you are remote, this won't happen. So you need to plan ahead and you need to have some kind of way of celebrating those moments. And here we have, you know, birthday card or uh, sharing the news with the broader community. And you, as you can see here, many people are reacting to it and, and uh, you know, having the joy of the moment so that we are all into it and people feel connected with the larger community. And this is not only about personal events as well as professional, so any kind of anniversary promotions. We also tend to share broadly, as you can see here, one, nearly 140 reactions. So people are really paying attention to it and really feeling those emotions of happiness and joy because someone has succeed. And very often, especially when you are talking about the promotions, you can see the feedback, the reasoning, all those things that make us sure that the person is ready to play a new role. Um, and also when we are officially communicate, communicating it, we really like to make it personal, sometimes, you know, funny with insider jokes, insiders jokes. But what is important is to show that we really know and understand the person and that they, they deserved whatever promotions or, or uh, prize or recognition they are receiving. I don't know, Natalia, yeah, do you want to add? Uh, yeah, anything? I just want to add that uh, yeah, it's very important to track those, uh, track those events. And then, for instance, I just use the calendar and I have like all the important events of my team set in the calendar so I don't forget about them because I'm really, I'm horrible with dates. Um, so whatever works for you, but you should be the one to remember and schedule those kind of events and also put a little bit of extra effort and a little bit of extra um, thought into those kind of messages. And this is what I love about NetGuru and then just those kind of traditions that we do um, those messages and those announcements are very often they are very, very personal. Um, for instance, with my, when I was promoted to senior position, um, uh, when I read my promotion post, I literally cried because it was just like the whole story um, of 
how I developed, what I worked on, uh, what I achieved within the, within my role. And then yeah, it was very personal, like touching a, a lot of, uh, about my, um, relationship with my manager. And then, yeah, it was very, uh, very touchy. So I think this is very important. This, those kind of, um, uh, messages make people feel very, very special. Thanks. Um, and how do we know all of, all of those things? Because of course, as a manager, you cannot know everything and monitor all of the actions and development of your team. So basically we have this strong culture of feedback and typical uh, feedback cycle is one quarter, three months, and every three months a manager is responsible for gathering feedback from different people on the organization about their teammates. And this is a typical template like with should he or she start stop uh, doing or continue doing because it's pretty pretty good or, or uh, executed flawlessly but then we also tweak those uh, feedback forms to adjust them to the needs or ambitions or specific situation that our specific people are in so for instance this is another feedback form when we want to know um, what is the Philips brand, what he is known for, and what kind of suggestions for his further development any of the people that he cooperated with have. Or for instance, here one, uh, the one uh, for, from, uh, for Michal, and here we can see what kind of expectations people have of his role and how he influences the whole team. This is the thing that he was interested in or, or his manager was interested in. So we also tweak and adjust those forms to know the best what is the um, perception of the person and how we can further work with the, him or her to develop, to grow his capabilities. And one thing that is also a bit harder in a remote setting than in co-location is um, having a team identity. So having the sense of belonging, of unique bond that we are sharing with our team, that is uh, something that we don't share with anybody else. Uh, within the company or outside. And I think that the manager's role is to recognize those things because they are not very tangible, but recognize them and reinforce and make some traditions that will not fade away, but will keep reman reminding people about some moments or some specific uh, language that we have used or some specific jokes that we have that nobody else will understand. And sometimes they have physical representation. In that guru, one of those is having a personal emoji because we create a lot of custom emojis. So, and this is kind of a rite of passage for every person, like until you don't have, uh, until you have uh, an emoji, uh, you know, you, you are not a fully uh, Nadgural. So this is mine, as I use music a lot to express mood or emotions, or just, you know, have some kind of sense and, and positive vibe. So I have been uh, called Slack DJ, and this skill is legit. I have put it in my uh, LinkedIn profile and it's there and people are endorsing it. So I think we are doing quite fine here. And I think also, you know, using any kind of visuals or music to uh, enrich the communication of text is a great way to, to start a day or start the conversation. And we are coming to the subject that is very, very important for me and effective one-on-one -on -one meetings, because we already told you that we think that the best way is to have weekly meeting with every team member, but how to make it valuable for both sides, a leader and also a team member. And for sure, at first, if you haven't done that before, it's awkward because these are not status meetings. These are not um, discussing discussions strictly about the way the work goes because we see it in those tools like monday.com so we want to get something more something more personal so every team member every week and we want to go a bit deeper into uh, knowing the person knowing their motivations ambition ambitions fears so if it feels like a first date then you are doing something right once it stops feeling like that once it's it's become it becomes purely about the work and it's more of the status update, more maybe detailed that you are getting, then it's not as effective. Or if it's 
if it goes a different direction and it becomes very friendly like chat about weather and kids and anything else, then also it's not, you don't have this tension necessary to really touch on things that are important. And very often some emotions are discussed, uh, both positives and negatives and understanding what drives people and what kind of feedback they have to the situations or company or specific people is very important. This is the best place to uh, express it and to in a safe environment discuss it so we need to come prepared not every one-on-one -on -one needs to go with the same agenda and you know go through all the same elements because there are so many of them like you can discuss you know, work challenges we can discuss uh, some uh, career plans we can discuss some difficult situations or challenges in front of us as an organization or as a specific person. So there are different subjects we can touch on and, and practically, practically never run off the ideas for what we should discuss. And coming prepared with some specific goal for the meeting surely helps. And in today's situation, it's very important also to check on those uh, feelings and attitudes and uh, see whether the person is doing fine in this situation and the stress is not overwhelming and uh, there is no burnout because working from home for the first time typically ends up with being overproductive and working too much so understanding when the person is on the spectrum whether they are taking it very personal any kind of you know mistakes and failures they make and helping them out to go up is very important this is one of the main i think responsibilities of a leader I don't know, Natalia, do you want to add anything about one-on-ones? Um, just the key thing is, the, the, especially in the remote settings, when you can't really see the people in the office, this is the only, I mean, not the only, but meetings with the team or one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, is the time when you can sense whether the person is motivated or not motivated, where maybe they are dealing with some personal problems. Um, and those are the things that you can spot in the office uh, when you are going to the office on a daily basis, but uh, because you don't have those moments uh, that we mentioned at the beginning in general. So, uh, yeah, you don't have those moments when you work in the remote settings. So one-on-ones are very important here to uh, see how the people are doing, especially in the difficult times. Yeah. And, and for me, this is the main tool uh, if I may call it this way, to, to manage the growth of the team and to taking care of their uh, skills and capabilities they need to develop to maybe someday become leaders themselves or advance in their career without having the specific time to stop all the work and discuss those matters. Most probably there will be no other opportunity. So we need to make space, make, make this time for those discussions. Um, all right. So next thing I, I wanted to talk about is uh, nurturing the growth of the whole team. So when we are thinking about working in teams, uh, in any teams, there is always some kind of group process and there is always some kind of progressions of maturity of the team. And we need to be aware of how it changes and where we are at in this maturity as leaders. And this is one of the models that can be used for this. This is Patrick Lencioni's, uh, uh, Patrick Lencioni, uh, five dysfunctions of a team. And it shows different levels that we need to go through to achieve this fifth level where, where we focus on performance and getting the better results and you know uh, raising the bar. Before we go to this point of you know team maturity, we need to go through different steps. And first of the, them is uh, a lack of trust. And trust is a fundamental thing when you, uh, when you think about remote working. Without that, it's very, very hard and stressful to work in a remote setting. And when I'm thinking about managers who switch from being collocated with their teams to work in a remote setting, one thing that is very evident that if they do not know how to evaluate the performance or the, or the quality of work of their team, they very often don't know what to look for so they want to know everything like report to me every hour tell me what you have worked on or write me uh, what you have worked on and what are the results and there is a lot of this overhead that is really stressful and unnecessary and ends up with uh, micromanagement which nobody likes but when you are a good leader you can 
identify some data points or information or sources uh, which are sparse but good enough to give you the understanding of the quality of the work and kind of what kind of support you can provide to your team members and then you know what to look for but if you are a great manager you actually know when to look away when you can say to the person okay i trust you we don't need to like discuss it anymore because i know you can handle it or just let me know when you have any issues but i don't need to monitor this kind of activity with you anymore and we are when we are thinking about the best performing team and Google made this research that lasted for nearly two years. Uh, what makes some teams much more effective than the others? And the first point was psychological safety, which is also connected with trust, that we trust each other, that we can be open with our opinions and feelings and that no harm will happen to us then. But when you are open with your opinions, you discover that we have different opinions and we don't agree with each other. And we have some conflicts which are hard to detect in a remote setting, but we talk about it. Now let's focus how to resolve them. And for me, the best thing to remember is Hanlon's razor, which says, uh, never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by, by incompetence. So other, in other words, assume uh, good intentions. Whatever is done, don't think that people are evil and, you know, trying to piss you off. So it's most of the cases are really about different things. And there is a theory behind, behind conflicts that typically this is some kind of uh, lack of information or not complete information or different perspectives or different interpretations of the data that we have that usually comes with uh, all comes from a different set of values that we use to evaluate whether something is good or bad. And when you start to talk with people and discuss those matters, very rarely you discover that there is some kind of bad intention or this malice uh, that is uh, a root cause of the issue. And having this mindset helps a lot to navigate through uh, conflicts. And when we think about the motivation, which is another another layer of this uh, five dysfunctions pyramid, for, for me, the most important thing is to understand what are the goals of the company, my team, or me as a leader, and personal goals of the team members. And when we can find the sweet spot, the place where all of those are in line, then for sure, problems with motivations will be very rare or very, very weak. The difficulty is that you cannot set it once and you know, not work on it anymore because all of those things are changing and company strategy is changing and personal goals, people are developing new skills. They want different things in different uh, times of their careers. So as a manager, you need to really navigate and one-on-ones are great opportunity to see whether we have still this kind of compatibility, uh, uh, those goals, whether they are compatible with each other or whether we have this sweet spot or not anymore and then adjust and react to those difficulties. And then with motivation, very often there goes engagement. And this is a sum of, of many, many small things, which we already discussed. So having this clear goal and understanding how your personal goals fit into the goals of the organization, having those short feedback loops and positive reinforcement of praise and recognition and seeing that you are doing good work and recognizing it is very important because then of course, when we promote it on a bigger scale, you have bragging rights and you, your status is increasing and you feel good about yourself. And the last thing is a relationship with others. So building those personal deep connections, sharing those bond with the team is very important. And if all of those are in place, then surely uh, there will be no issue with disengagement or kind of negative engagement uh, in the work of the team. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is navigating not only your team, but your team in the context of the whole uh, organization and you know, connecting the dots and having um, and giving people a, a place where they can shine on a bigger scale. And for me, uh, the exposure of the team, like showing the rest of the organization or, or the rest of the world, what kind of things we are doing, what we are proud of, and what we are happy about is very important in remote setting because those opportunities are not easily 
uh, easily uh, found and you need to be really aware of where and when there will be a stage where you can you know recognize somebody go and whatever you have a mic just remember that you can say thank you to somebody whose work might be unnoticed or not really uh, effective like in the terms of how they sound or look like this is especially important for all of the operations work or uh, devops work where their success is having no fuck up which is you know some could say very low uh, bar but in the end it's very important that we don't have those issues and recognizing the effort behind making sure that nothing went wrong is also a, a great way to go with so for instance we have those co communication on a team level that shows what different people within the team are doing what what we are planning to do who did a great job how you can get to know more about their accomplishments or their successes and also very often if you are a good manager you find ways to promote your team members in different areas like uh, newsletters like company announcements ceo letter or sometimes even you know getting one of our founders victor who is executive chairman right now also to co congratulate to celebrate some uh, successes and here we have example of uh, qa quality assurance person so basically someone who makes sure that nothing will go wrong and there is no spectacular success behind it but we see that our client has really found it useful and valuable and we are happy about it natalia would you like to say a bit more about this subject uh, i think i'm good uh, yeah all right all right so the last thing uh, the last thought i would like to leave you with is that we will never come back to the type of work we used to have before the coronavirus and the quarantine. Once we started to move to remote and start to adapt those practices, our way of working will be changed forever. Like everything that you have developed or find out or tested right now will be with you when you go back to the offices. And hopefully the ability to have um, this moment of reflections and change and different environment where we need to adapt and think through the way we work will end up being positive for you. So all of those things that we discuss right now about remote work will be as applicable in co-location as ever and, and hopefully you will benefit from it as well. So this is my kind of call of, to action for all of the leaders and managers like use this opportunity because whatever you are winning right now uh, will stay with your teams, with your organization for for a long time and having this moment of really drastic change is the best way to form new habits It's the best way to form new ways of working because people are, need to adjust anyway so you can use it for a positive change and i think this is all from our end unless Antalya, you would like to add anything else that we didn't have slides for uh, no, I think uh, I think well, we can answer the questions now. Uh, so this is the QA time, and then you, you we've already have one question, uh, but uh, feel free to add more uh, if you need to learn more specifics about uh, your situation, or maybe you want to learn a little bit more about the tools. Um, so we've got a question from Pavel asking: Should we set the, the agenda? For of the one-on-one -on -one earlier when my manager said one-on-one -on -one, they are always afraid because they don't know what to expect so basically i i can share my how i do it and how i deal with it like i have a um the same document with notes for every of the uh, team member and then every week we just set up the new date and we use the same templates where is this place for topics from my uh my team member and then from topics for myself and then i just upload those topics once they uh, pop up in my head and then we just discuss it in the following one-on-one -on -one. so it's usually the agenda is already there because um those are just like ongoing things that we want to discuss and then they appear in the document but it's very personal i would say because some people they don't really need that uh but some of uh some of the people from my team they actually mentioned that they they prefer when there is a clear agenda before either whether that's the weekly meeting or or that's a one-on-one -on -one meeting whether that's one-on-one yeah. -on -one or meeting with the whole team 
help to answer the question. I can add from myself that I also have a template in Confluence. This is kind of a wiki that we use, but the tool is not very important. What is important that every time we finish one-on-one, -on -one, we open a new template or a new new instance of, of uh, those meeting nodes for the next week. And throughout the week, myself as a team leader or my team member can add stuff in because they have the situation or they have discussed something and they, they need a bigger context to it. So those kind of things are like gathered and just before all on the day of uh, the one on one, we can both go through it and prepare for the meeting so that when we start, we have all of those, those information prepared and we know what it will be about. For some specific meetings, like once a month, I really try to have this dedicated time for discussing the career path or the growth. So those kind of things might be set in place long before, but other than that, we are gathering those agenda, agenda items throughout the week so that no one is surprised when we start one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting. Mm, and there's a, an additional question. Do you mean agenda by bullets? Uh, yeah, it's just, just basically topics that we want to cover during the, the meeting. That's how it works. Uh, and the meeting usually takes around uh, one hour. Yep. For, for me, it was 50 minutes, basically, always. And sometimes we got into do such an interesting discussion that we make, made it longer, but... Uh, yeah, but this is, this is, I think, what, what is the best way. But if you don't have so many things to talk about, starting from 10, 15 minutes is a good way. And then uh, as you go deeper and discuss different matters, you will find out that more time is needed. And for the very beginning, uh, the, the good way or something that I would recommend is to use some kind of uh, personality tests or whether it's a MBTI or a strengths fighter by Gallup or a big five, whatever. If you have a new team member, it's great to have them do the test and then you can discuss the results. It's not, you know, a way to get to know each other, but rather like to maybe not go, uh, get to know each other. Not, not the way to you know, know the person because of the results, but rather discussing the results itself. Like what is interesting for you in the result that you got? What do you agree with? What do you, what don't you agree with? What can I see from my perspective that is really matching and what I think is, you know, a complete mess in this description of your personality or uh, way of thinking or anything else. So these are good ways to start. And once you have those discussions, it's much, much easier to follow up with different topics. Mm, and there is additional personal experience from Evelina. Uh, she says that the employee should own the agenda and share it with the team leader. Uh, and the team leader should be adding to the agenda if they want to share or discuss things. Uh, yeah, it's another way of doing it. Uh, I think it's also a good idea. Um, the difference with my setup is that I, like, I'm I'm the owner of the file, but it's open for the the the, the employee and for myself, so everyone can add to it uh, and contribute it throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, and there is another question from Pavel uh, about Monday software. Uh, so why do we have Monday software for our team? Um, we have used Trello. Um, I mean, quite a long time, long time ago, we used Trello. Then we moved to Jira because it's the, it's a company-wide uh, software that we use for track uh, for tracking uh, tasks and uh, different projects. But it didn't really work for us um, in marketing and uh, like our growth activities because software projects and tech projects uh, are a little bit different than products that we have. Uh, all the campaigns that we manage are a little bit different than. Um, than the tech project. So we decided that we're gonna move somewhere else. We were thinking about moving to Trello. We tested a few uh, options and then Monday um, kind of hit all the marks. And um, for now it's optimal solution for us. It's user friendly. It has um, a lot of automations, a lot of integrations. Uh, it is developed all the time. It, has, it, it is a big company. So it's not like the software is gonna die uh, overnight, um, and I think that's that's answer. So your question: Each team ha can have their own. 
Not really. I mean, within smaller teams, uh, like within growth team, we all use Monday. Um, but a company wild wise, it's it's mostly Jira. Mm -hmm. um, and then, how do you manage tasks across teams? Uh, 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 depends. <laughs> depends on what kind of many things happen on Jira. So, for instance, when we do have. Uh, cooperation with designers. Uh, we send the tickets on Jira because they use Jira for this. Um, a lot of projects just happen on Slack. Uh, I mean, just communication happens on Slack and then the pro project owner uh, makes the communication between one team and another team and, and mirrors the task between different tools. Um, so yeah, I guess it depends. Mm. And, and last test. week, last week we also uh, talked about Wikidan that we use for uh, setting the OK, OKRs, so objectives and key results. And those are typically some, uh, you know, bigger chunks of work that we want to coordinate between different teams. So if we are talking about like bigger cooperation, it's usually over there that we have set some kind of goals and we expect some kind of effect of it. And we can also discuss or uh, communicate it there. Mm. There's additional question regarding Monday. Uh, whether do we have two tasks? Uh, Colon in Monday and in Jira, or do we use integration? Right now, we don't really use integration with Jira because, as I said, we only setting up the the whole tool, um, and we try not to copy uh, task like not to copy um, too many tasks in too many places because that just creates a lot of chaos and more of admin work, and this is what we are trying to avoid by setting up a new uh, task manager tool. Mm. So it's usually when we want something to be done by another team, we send them tickets, they handle it. And once it's done, we move it to our, uh, our tool. Mm -hmm. And there's one more question from Papa to myself. Krzysztof, can you repeat the name? I think it relates to week done. So this is our uh, planning tool for, for uh, whole company strategy and on whole company goals. But I'm not sure how long we will stay with it. We have some, uh, you know, strong feedback towards it, so we might change it. But uh, for now, it's week done. Weekdone.com. Mm, any any, any other questions? questions? Yeah. Related to the relation relationships between managers and team members, or how we perform our leader's role at Nadguru. Or do you have any kind of challenges or issues that you experience on your own and need a piece of advice from us? Mm, how big is the team for me? Week one -on -one is, uh, weekly one-on-one -on -one is challenging. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, it is challenging for me as well. Um, <laughs> I'm one of those people who's trying to like cut the, the, all the calls uh, to minimum, but it's very, uh, very difficult, especially after becoming a leader, I realized how much time I spend just talking with people and then being on the calls. Um, and right now I do have uh, bi-weekly one-on-one -one meetings. Uh, but also like I'm open if there anybody needs to put a meeting, an additional meeting in a calendar, I'm always open to it. And there's always a slot uh, for this. Um, but I reckon bi-weekly is minimum uh, frequency. And the team, uh, my team is five people. Yeah, right now. Yeah, and, and, and the same is for me. Like we, we try to not go more than five. It happens from time to time, but we think that you can be an effective leader of five people and that's that's it. And if you need more, then we need to change the structure a bit. So on the exceptional basis, it may happen that there is more, but we don't, we try not to exceed five people in a team. So it's about five hours a week or one hour a day to meet with everyone and at this time. And I think this is, you know, the most important thing you can do as a manager like the most sacred time of a day is one-on-one -on -one with your team members i think that nothing else is as important as this activity 
so uh, I always managed my calendar in a way that those meetings happens, that we never skip. Maybe, you know, throughout the three years, I skipped like two or three one-on-ones. And other than that, I did weekly with everybody. And those things when we, those moments when we skipped were usually uh, shorter weeks, like two, two days a week because we had some holidays or something like that. So I think this is very important because this way you can expand your impact as a manager and you can grow your people to do things more effectively or be capable, be more resilient to cope with any challenges that will happen. And I think nothing, nothing, nothing else will make a, such a good impact on the company. And especially if you are a bit higher up in the hierarchy and you are managing leaders or you know having this few levels, if you grow your leader, leaders right, they will then grow their teams. So the, the kind of leverage on this activity is very, very high. And if you just ignore it or not do it for any reasons, then you are missing up on this opportunity, on this huge impact you could have on your organization. So really, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that you cannot you know, find a good reason to skip the one-on-one. -on -one. Probably the only one is if you have a conflict and you are having one-on-one -on -one with your boss or with your leader, then maybe, you know, that's, that's a valid reason. Other than that, I don't think that there is a good point. Anything else, guys? Do you have any more questions? We'll wait a, a moment. Uh, because maybe someone will find the courage to write us a question. I see a few people that have been attending our webinars for in previous weeks. So maybe this is also kind of summary of the things that we talk about. But if you have any other comments or remarks, please let us know. Or maybe if you not, want to share your experience experiences. All right, so three, two, one, sold. So we will move on. If you want to know more about uh, challenges of remote work and how we cope with it, what is the Nadguru way of doing the remote work, then visit our YouTube playlist and you can find the recordings of the previous webinars and we'll be adding their, uh, the next ones. And uh, in a week, we will meet and talk about sales and customer relationship how you keep those relationships strong when you cannot meet and greet your customers or your clients or your users. This is an interesting subject and we'll have an expert on that. Then we'll also discuss remote recruitment and how we recruit people, what is the process, what are the challenges of having people uh, remotely doing some uh, challenges or some tasks or uh, how we validate their fit during the interviews. And uh, lastly, most probably we'll talk about design teams, how designers cooperate and work in remote setup. And you can visit our website, which is dedicated to remote uh, subject, and then you will find more links and tips and information about how we do the remote work uh, actually work. And this is all from us. So if you have any further questions that you were not willing to share maybe during the webinar, but you would like to get some answers, please let us know, write to us, give us feedback if you find those webinars um, valuable for you or you think they can get better, please let us know because this is very important. We'll use it for sure while preparing the next ones. And I think this is all from our side. So thank you very much for, thank for you joining. So much. It was great to have you here and uh, see you next week, hopefully. Please sign up and be with us in a week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.